Demons do not seem to be shy, whether it's possession of an object or of a person they take any chance to communicate with the living. These stories are terrifying so hopefully nothing like this has ever happened to you. So let's jump in to the top 5 real demons who contacted the living. Coming in at number 5 we have Shadow Dog. One reddit user told the story of a contact she had with a demon when she was younger. Her parents had just divorced when she was a teenager. She decided that she would live with her mother in her new home. As soon as she moved in she started to experience some paranormal activity. It started small, she would be reading her books on her bed when she suddenly felt an icy chill take over her. Then she would feel like she was being watched by an entity that hated her, but obviously there was no one else in the room. She said when she felt this she would leave her house and go for a walk for more than an hour. Usually by this time the feeling had passed. She then started to see shadows behind her, like there was someone stood in the room with her. This started to get worse when she would see the shadows move around her bedroom walls. They were getting bolder in their contact with her. The demon then started to imitate their family dog. She thinks this might have been a way to trick her into making a physical connection with the demon, allowing it to take full possession. The demon would make a growling noise from under her bed, like her dog was in need of help. The dog had refused to enter the room for months at this point so she was not fooled by the demon. After this she could not stay there anymore, with the demon becoming bolder and increasingly active. She moved in with her father and she never experienced anything paranormal again. I do appreciate that she was like, screw you mum, I'm leaving, you stay with the dog in this haunted house. Mother's probably gone now, RIP. Demon got her. In at number 4 we have texting the devil. Demons could choose any form of communication with the living. They are not bound by our laws of reality. Sometimes they choose possession, others will only talk through a medium or Ouija board. But still one priest claims he is being contacted by a demon via text messages. Father Marianne Rachel, a priest from Poland claims that a demon from a failed exorcism is now harassing him. He attempted to perform the exorcism on a teenage girl but unfortunately was unsuccessful. He believed the devil is using this teenage girl to mock his failed attempt via these text messages. One of the messages that he received from the demon was, I quote, She will not come out of this hell. She's mine. Anyone who prays for her will perish. The priest responded to this that the young girl is clearly still possessed and needs further help. The Catholic Church took this extremely seriously, although there were some doubters, the majority of the community was extremely concerned about this young girl and her behaviour since the possession began. The family of the girl cooperated fully with the church to try and save their sick daughter. They brought her back in for a second exorcism. This one seems to have been successful as far as they are aware. The priest did comment that he received a threatening message after the girl was saved from the demon. They threatened that the two would meet again and he would not be able to save himself next time. The priest however remains confident he has rid the world of this demon. He was calm and confident about the whole thing. I don't think I would enjoy texting with the devil. To be honest I think it's probably the girl playing a little Halloween trick. Coming in at number 3 we have Dark Letter. Back when letter writing was still a thing that was commonly done, it was used by demons to leave messages with the living. Over 300 years ago in Sicily at the convent at Parma di Montesciero, a nun named Sister Maria Crossafissa claimed that she had been possessed by the devil. The story of what happened to her has finally been told and her letter has finally been translated. The story is told that one morning in 1676 Sister Maria woke up and found herself covered in ink. She had no memory of it but had spent the night writing letters. Others in the convent had heard disturbances from her room during the night. Some had heard screaming, one said they heard a thud as if she was fainting and hit the floor. Maria had lived at the convent since she was 15 years old. She was devoted to them and had never showed signs of possession or doubt before this incident. The letters explain that Maria was writing on behalf of the devil. He was dictating the words she wrote. The letter said it was Lucifer's plan to possess Maria and turn her against God so she could serve evil. A lot of the letters were coded in hidden messages of symbols and shapes and they had no way to translate it at the time. Today some of the letters are still intact and the Ludum Science Center in Italy attempted to finally decode a portion of the text. The software is reportedly used by intelligence agencies for code breaking. They gave the machine the understanding of Greek, Arabic, the runic alphabet and Latin. This revealed that the text really was devilish. It described God as a dead weight. It went on to say God could not free mortals from their fate. There is also a reference made within the writing to the river Styx, which in Greek mythology is said to separate the realm of the living from the underworld. The church was trying to disprove that the nun was ever possessed. If anything, decoding the letter proved the opposite. Maria seems to have been very lucky that the possession didn't go further. In at number 2 we have Singapore Doll. We all know that demons have an attachment to creepy dolls. There are so many stories 
stories of dolls coming to life and terrorizing families. For one unlucky neighborhood in Singapore, an old doll appeared and started to terrorize those who took it home. One Twitter user told the story to her followers as a warning. The doll first appeared leaning against a tree on a busy residential street. The doll was small and looked like an antique. Her arms were bound to her body with string and she had a cloth across her eyes with Arabic text written across it. The girl brought the doll home and unbound her while also removing her blindfold. She said not long after bringing the doll home, she noticed that it would move around the home when left alone. She also said that she would hear it talking to itself when she left the room. It was clear to her that the doll was possessed. It soon made sense why it was bound when she found it. Although she did not know the doll's backstory, it seems the previous owner has a similar experience. She threw the doll away hoping to stop the demon from being in her home. However, when she returned, the doll was back home. It knew how to return to her home when it was refusing to leave. She decided to try and bind the doll as she found it. She drove far away from her home and left the doll. Seems that the doll had been continuing this cycle. When you find and untie the doll, the demon and curse transfers to you. The owner saw someone post about finding the doll after she had left it. She saw that it had been untied and posted, we bind it for a reason stupid people, unbind it. It looks unhappy. Good luck to whoever did it. Her account has since been deleted so she couldn't be tracked down for questions or for them to attempt to return the doll. The doll's current location is unknown but its existence is now well known in the area. There have been discussions and crimes happening in the locations where the doll has been seen. Crimes that have never happened in these areas. The doll seems to communicate with other demons while alone and then whispers to its new owner when given the chance. Some suggested the doll be burned or crushed but it is unclear if this would work. Surely someone has already tried this at some point. And finally in a number one we have imaginary friend. Sometimes children have imaginary friends and we don't think anything of it but what if their friend isn't so imaginary? One little girl from Texas named Madison had many imaginary friends when she was younger. All of her imaginary friends came as a pair. When she was three years old she started to talk about a new friend. Her mother Kelly found this strange as this friend came around by themselves. Her new friend was called Kellum. She described him as a man around the age of 40. She said she saw him as a father figure. She started to spend a lot of her time playing with him rather than her other imaginary friends. She would build her blocks into a tower and knock them over as it made him laugh. The mother was keeping an eye on her with this latest friend but was not concerned until she started to sing an old song. At the time she didn't know how old the song was. Madison would sing the song all of the time. Her mother asked the nanny where the song is from thinking she taught her it. She wanted to sing it with her to develop her language skills but the nanny had never heard the song before. She had no idea where it was from. They looked into it everywhere until they finally found it online and realized it was an old song. It was released in 1892. No one in their life would be familiar with this song. She asked Madison who taught her the song. She said Kellum taught her. He sings it to his child. This shocked Kelly. This imaginary friend has an imaginary baby and he is teaching her real songs. She cannot find an explanation for it. Things quickly began to get worse. Maybe Kellum had been watching Kelly figuring out he is more than an imaginary friend but maybe he was an entity communicating with her daughter. One night Madison woke up screaming. When she was older she told the story that Kellum was grabbing onto her arm pulling on her. He was getting angry and frustrated that she did not want to stay up and play. She kicked him away and tried to flee the room. She was screaming as she tried to climb the baby gate. Kelly was woken up by the screaming and ran and grabbed Madison as she cried for help. Kelly looked back to the room where the curtains were blowing like there was a great wind in the room. But the windows were all closed. They fled their home. Safely relocated at their friend's home, Kelly called her stepfather who was a pastor. He did not believe in demons and if she had come to him sooner the community might have labelled her a sinner for inviting this entity into her home but she was desperate. Her stepfather told her to stay away from the home till he was done. He called her the next morning saying it was safe to return. When she got home holy oil had been used all over the house to protect them. And they both said it felt peaceful when they re-entered their home. Madison never saw any of her imaginary friends again. Now she is older and able to reflect on it. She feels the demon was talking to her, telling her stories and attempting to get her to behave badly. Well there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Do you believe demons exist? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part 2. And on that note if you haven't already be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and until next time I'll see you later. Over 300 years ago in Sicily at the convent of Parma di, Parma di Monte, Montesciara, Montesciara, named Sister Maria, Maria, <laughs> Maria, Maria Crossifis, Cro, Crossifissa, wait, Crossifissa, <laughs> Crossifissa, okay, that's her name now.